there are five different Logitech Brio webcams. They are the original Logitech Brio, Brio 100, Brio 300, Brio 500, and MX Brio. But wait, are there really only five, you might say? You may have seen or heard of other variants like the Brio 505, the Brio 101. Now, some of these webcams do have some legitimate slight variations, but most of the other models like the Brio 101, for example, specifically don't really exist. You'll see why through the course of this video. So I'm gonna quickly summarize each individual Logitech Brio while explaining the differences. Then we're gonna show each webcam side by side just like this so that you can really get an idea of what they all look like in comparison to each other. And I'll show them in different lighting scenarios also. And as you can see, since I only have a grid of four here, I'll be swapping the original Brio in and out in the slot of the Brio 100, starting with the original Brio. This launched in 2017 and it was by far the best webcam on the market for a good five years straight. It can record up to 4K 30 frames per second and also 1080p 60 frames per second. It uses the MJPEG format. However, at 1080p 30 frames per second and below, it can be set to YUI2 and NV12 and OBS, which improves the colors. Speaking of that quick disambiguation, if you see something like the Logitech Brio Stream or the 4k pro webcam whatever they're calling it they keep on switching up the name those are just the brio the logitech brio the original one also there's a 2017 version and a 2022 version technically they're the same webcam the newer one has slightly different firmware but both of them have privacy shutters both of them let you change the white balance so the reddit moderators on logitech subreddit they just give out a lot of misinformation now this webcam has a field of view of 90 degrees it is compatible with Logitech's G-Hub software, which I don't recommend because OBS is better, but in that software specifically, you can change the FOV to 78 degrees or 65 degrees. This is just a digital zoom, which you can do in other software anyway, like OBS, but if you specifically want to do that, you can. This device does have autofocus. It's pretty quick and snappy. Really never had many complaints with the Brio's autofocus. The body is made of a combination of metal and plastic. It has an 85 inch detachable USB-C to a cable. It does require USB 3.0 to use this at its maximum settings. It has basically no adjustability on the monitor mount. And that's gonna be key here. That's why some of the webcams are gonna be like a little bit slanted and just kind of at off angles because some of them you can have pretty good adjustment and some of them you just kind of can't. So having them all on one monitor in a row and then kind of tilting them to face me, some of them are just gonna look a little bit off on their angle. Anyway, this can be detached from the monitor mount and mounted to a tripod since it has quarter inch threading on the bottom. When it comes to the image quality, and I'll show more of this, of course, I'll give this a number two out of five. So if one is the best and five is the worst out of these, this is number two, second best. And lastly, this is a quick demonstration of the microphone that's built into the Logitech Brio. It is daytime and there are some cars going outside, even though I do have the window closed, you can kind of still hear some of that creeping in. I'm not gonna go in depth in the audio with all these webcams because honestly, I don't think I need to. As for price, I actually bought the Logitech Brio twice. Both times it was about $150. So that's kind of where I still see it for about right now. But links to all the webcams will be below so that you can see their current pricing. Next is the Brio 100. This came out in September of 2023. It is Logitech's ultra budget option that finally replaces the ancient C270 from like 2010. So on Amazon, maybe for tracking purposes, I don't know why, but the Brio 100 is actually sold as two different ASINs, the Brio 100, which is white, and the Brio 101, which is black. But if you go to Best Buy or something, or even Logitech's own website, both colors are just this, the Brio 100. Now this records up to 1080p, 30 frames per second in MJPEG, and it has a very narrow 58 degrees field of view. If I'm like 42 inches away from the webcam, this is the type of shot that you get. So it's very tight up to your face and angling it's a little bit difficult. I'll talk about that in a second. But as you probably noticed, it does not have autofocus. This is fixed focus. So if you put anything too close to the webcam, it just can never really focus on it. Now the body is all plastic and the wire is not detachable. It's 60 inches long, USB-A. 60 inches is not long at all. It's a huge hassle to actually connect it like to your computer especially depending on how far away your monitor is. If you're just on a laptop, it's not that big of a deal. If your computer's right next to your monitor, it's not that big of a deal. The Brio 100 is a pretty bad monitor mount. It doesn't really clip to anything and there's no tripod threading. The privacy shutter slides, but make sure not to cover up the mic if you're actually gonna use the mic. Now, when it comes to the image quality, this is definitely the worst out of these. 
5 out of 5. However, considering the price, and I got this for $25, this is actually extremely decent for how much it costs. Like for an ultra budget webcam, I actually like this a lot. I think the colors are a lot better than like the Logitech C920. I don't think you can really match that thing in terms of the sharpness. Also, the field of view is extremely narrow, but we'll talk more about the image quality a little bit later in this video. But for ultra budget webcam, I like it a lot. And here's a demonstration of what the microphone sounds like on the Brio 100. And let me just go ahead and move that privacy center over the microphone. Because it's really easy to accidentally do this. And so you can hear what it sounds like if the privacy center is on the wrong spot. Next is the Brio 300. This came out in January of 2023. I'm not really sure what this webcam is based off of, if anything, but I think this is an even better option than the C920 for cheaper, depending on where you get it, of course. I got my Brio 300 for 50 bucks. Now there's a Brio 305, which is the enterprise version, but the only thing I think it does differently is it connects to Logis Sync so that it can be managed remotely, but I don't really know much about that. This also records up to 1080p 30 frames per second MJPEG, but it still looks significantly better than the Brio 101. Just really quickly showing this webcam here. Just like the Brio 101, this is fixed focus, so you're not gonna be able to show anything close to the webcam. This does have a less claustrophobic field of view, 70 degrees. The cable is 60 inches, again, non-detachable USB-C this time. Now the monitor mount is far more stable than the Brio 100. Unfortunately, you still can't attach this to a tripod or any sort of stand, something like that that has, because there's no threading on it. It has a weird clock hand type of privacy shutter. It looks cool, but it requires you to grab it so much that you almost definitely need to readjust the angle of it after you're done putting the privacy shutter on or off. Now the image quality, I'd give it a four out of five out of all five of these webcams. However, don't let that deter you because I think that this might actually be the best value option out of these five webcams right now. Like clearly, yeah, there's three webcams that look better than this, but this is actually ridiculously good value. And this is how the microphone sounds on the Brio 300. And it's gonna be a lot harder to put the privacy shutter on the microphone. Actually, you can't really even cover it. So something that you don't really have to worry about with this. Two more. This is the Logitech Brio 500. This came out in September of 2022. This is the only one that I actually have manual white balance on. All the rest of them I have auto white balance. I think that they actually do a better job when you put them on auto white balance because there's a shade of like whitish yellow that none of these webcams can really get if you're using manual white balance. I'm not really sure what this webcam is based off of either, but it seems like a very underspecced version of the Logitech MX Brio, which I'm going to show next. And the specs are very confusing. This, again, can only do 1080p 30 frames per second. If you really need it, it can do 720p 60 frames per second. It has a 90 degree field of view by default, so very wide, but you can also change this in the Logitech G Hub settings to 78 or to 65. Now I bought this webcam for $130, which makes the specifications very confusing to me, but now it does have HDR. It is a very subtle effect in comparison to some other webcams. I do have it on right now, especially since it's at 30 frames per second. It's probably better to just keep it on. If you turn it off, this is what it looks like. The highlights get a little bit too blown out and it's a little bit extra hazy. And then this is with it on and you're not gonna lose any frame rate because it can only do 30 frames per second anyway. So now on Amazon, you'll see these as the Brio 500 and the Brio 501. The 500 is white, the 501 is black, but they're the same thing. The Brio 505 is just the enterprise version which has a detachable cable and connects to larger sync. Now the 500 has yet again a non-detachable 60 inch cable USB-C and like the Brio 100 and 300 this is all plastic build but it has a much more sturdy monitor mount. It's magnetic to clip to the webcam and there's also quarter inch threading as well. It's got to screw this little thing off of the bottom of the webcam but then you can see it. Now as far as the video quality this is going to be a 3 out of 5. It's honestly not that much better than the Brio 300 considering the price goal. Like yeah it looks better it's sharper but considering how much more this costs let's go ahead and switch back over to the brio 300 yeah it's definitely an improvement but the main thing is the field of view so the lens that they've got but i'm not sure if it's better enough to really justify and this is the microphone of the brio 500 and there's a car going by so that could be really good so that you can hear the background noise rejection or the lack of it and finally this is the logitech mx brio this is from Logitech's Master Series lineup, which is supposed to be the most premium. And this was the most premium in terms of the cost. For me, I bought this for $200. This also has the best specs of any of the webcams here. This can do 4K 30 frames per second MJPEG, but it can also do 1080p 60 frames per second at not just MJPEG, but YUI2 
and NV12. That's something that the original Brio could not do. And this also has HDR. It does make a significant difference, but there is a bigger downside to the HDR of this. So let me go ahead and demonstrate. This is what the HDR on, because I generally leave it on. Uh, it does improve the sharpness a lot. This is what the off looks a lot darker and it just can't brighten up a lot of the areas. And then the sharpness does take a hit. The one issue is if you put this to 1080p, 60 frames per second, that's why I got this out right now. Well, it's got that little weird blur effect on my hands. And then you'll notice if you actually count the frames, it's not really even 60 frames per second because it can't actually achieve that when the HDR is on. So you're going to turn the HDR off like I just did right now. And then it's going to be a lot blurrier, but you are going to get that smoother image. So it's kind of pros and cons. And I've talked more about this a little bit more in depth in the MX Brio review specifically, where I compared it more to the Logitech Brio original. 4K. 30 frames per second, MJPEG. Now the webcam itself also has the best build. It's made of aluminum, not just plastic, like most of the other ones. The privacy shutters under the lens, you're just gonna twist the outside of the lens to change that. It's got some magnetism. It's very similar like the Brio 500 where you have this magnetic thing that you can kind of pull it up. This has tripod threading. As a 60 inch cable, unfortunately it's so small, but the good news is that it is detachable so you can replace it with a different cable. The problem is that you're going to need USB 3.0 to get the full use out of this webcam, which is fine, except a lot of the wires that you'll get are going to say they're like USB-C, but they're not really going to give you the 3.0 speeds. I wish it just came with a longer wire. It would solve the issue, but it is USB-C to USB-C. The adjustability is probably the best of all these webcams also when it comes to the monitor mount. Now the settings with the MX Brio in G-Hub are actually legit. It has pretty much all the settings that you would really want in a webcam, including tint control, because I actually do not have the MX Brio on its default tint. I bring it down to negative one and that makes the reds and magentas a whole lot better. Otherwise you get this kind of like weird blue effect by default. The settings do save to the device. For some reason, the settings only save to the 300 and the MX Brio, I don't know why. But yeah, once you change the tint, when you go back to OBS, after you close G-Hub, then the tint change should stay. And here's an example of the microphone quality of the MX Brio. So it's pretty cool that all of these webcams, if for whatever reason you forgot your mic, or if you're just one of those people that doesn't use mics, which I do not recommend, but if you are, you do have the microphone on this webcam. You don't have to worry about not being able to like get into your Zoom call or whatever because you don't have any microphone. Now we've got four webcams in this grid and I'll put the original Brio on to replace the Brio 100 shortly. Right now I have a combination of a little bit of daylight, even though I do have the blinds closed. And then I've got the Elgato key light and the Elgato key light air. And then there's that little backlight back there. That's a Logitech Lytra Beam LX. All of these are at manual settings, but I have the white balance on automatic except for the Brio 500. And I explained why it just can't really get my skin tone right when it is on automatic, but I'm gonna go ahead and show that really quickly. This is automatic. And you see how it makes everything like kind of like weirdly yellowish. So I'm not a big fan of that. So I turn that off. The Brio 100 super zoomed into you. It's got like way too much grain. If you're going to be putting this on full screen, that's when you're really going to see it, especially if you have a 4K monitor. The grain isn't like insane when you have it like smaller, but when you put a full screen, you're really going to see the lack of sharpness and then the amount of grain that's in the image, even when you have good lighting. The Brio 300 looks significantly better than the 100. A little bit less grain, way better sharpness. Field of view is better. I like a lot of the ideas of the 500. But like I said, I don't think it's better enough to justify getting like $80 more, depending on, you know, when you buy and where you buy it. I think it might actually be better to get the original Logitech Brio because that can do 4K 30 frames per second, which is going to just look way better than the 1080 30 of this. And I'll show that in a little bit. And then this is the MX Brio on the bottom right, of course, which just looks the best. It's there's not really anything that the other webcams do that's better than this. The only thing that this really has an issue with is since the field of view is so wide, there's a lot of stuff in the frame that I really don't want there. And there's a lot of stuff if you're in like a business call or something like that, even if you're streaming like on Twitch or something, you might not want all that in the background. So now this is the Logitech Brio, the original that you can see on the upper left. And I put this next to the other webcams. It's at 4K 30 frames per second, but that might not really be able to come through well it definitely can't come through because even when you're watching this at 4k all the webcams are effectively only going to show their 1080p quality but if i go ahead and put them individually this is going to be what the logitech braille looks like i think the only real weakness with it is that the colors are a little bit too red honestly it's not that far off from like the MX Brio, which definitely does have better colors, but it's not a super radical difference. The MX Brio just got everything down. It's just the amount of grain, the sharpness, the HDR effect, it's really quickly. This is what each webcam looks like at fully automatic settings with just daylight only. Well, I do have that backlight over there. 
I know that this is actually going to be the scenario that most people end up using these webcams, but it's something that I do not recommend. If you're going to spend any significant amount of money to get a webcam more than like $20, then I would definitely get better lighting because that will make your webcam look way better than if you paid more money and then you just had worse lighting. So what is my verdict? Now I'll start with the budget. If you're super strapped for cash, then I would recommend the Brio 100. It's so far the best ultra budget webcam that I've used, like stuff that's under $30. It's just really good for the price. If you can spring for a little bit more spiring streamer or something like that, then I actually recommend the Logitech Brio 300 over the C920. I actually think that this is finally a option that is priced well that beats the C920. Maybe besides like there was an anchor webcam that also could beat it, but I like this webcam for its price. And the colors are quite good. It has less grain than the 100, sharper. 500, I think the overwhelming majority of people should probably skip. I, There may be a specific use case to get the 500. However, I think that if you're going up to 130, then you probably should just keep saving so that you can get something better or just save that money. Just do something else with it or put it in your bank account or whatever. Just, now, this is where it's interesting because I'm going to throw in the original Brio. So is there a actual reason to get the original Brio? I would say at this point, it's probably better to get the MX Brio. I would look for it on a sale if you can find it. But I think that the Brio has finally been surpassed by the MX Brio. There's a lot less grain. Colors are better. HDR effect is more subtle. The MX Brio is the one I say. If you want the best Logitech webcam that exists, go with the MX Brio. Not the original Brio, which was really good for seven years, but finally been surpassed by the MX Brio. Links to all these are going to be in the description, but before you go, I'm just going to tell you straight up, if you want the best of the best webcam, I recommend the Razer QL Pro Ultra.